Hello, Jen Genies. It's me, Julie. And Rich. Before we get started today, we want to let you in on some exciting news. We have launched our new Patreon page for the podcast. Woohoo! We are super excited about this new chapter for Cut Off Jeans. So, Patreon is a website where listeners like you can pledge a small monthly amount. We're talking only five or ten dollars, guys, to support the podcast and help defray the cost of bringing you the show each week. To be clear, Cut Off Jeans will continue to be absolutely free, Mm -hmm. but to thank you for your support, we are going to offer our patrons some fun little extras. Like early access to the podcast every week where you'll get to hear the latest episode before it's released to the general public. And why not make your friends jealous with exclusive patron-only Cut Off Jeans swag? Fancy. And here's something you guys have been asking for, and I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to host a monthly, hour-long, online Ask Me Anything session where patrons at the $10 level can literally ask me anything. Anything? (laughs) You're a brave woman, Julie. You know, I know. (laughs) I'm also going to give access to my blog, Are You My Father?, where I tell the story of my search, actually it's my life story basically, for my biological father in even more detail than I did on the podcast. Wow. Your blog was the original inspiration for Cut Off Jeans, wasn't it? It was. Well, all patrons at any level will receive a shout out on the podcast along with our undying gratitude for your support. Yep, you guys know that this show is a labor of love for me. It's something I'm very passionate about. It'd mean so much to me if you would consider supporting our work here on the podcast by going to patreon.com forward slash cutoff jeans podcast. That's patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash cutoff jeans podcast. We'll add a link to it on the podcast and on the Facebook page. Thank you all, my Jen Genies. And now, on with the show. Woohoo! Is your family tree a mystery? Are you fascinated by genealogy? Well, hip, hip, hooray, let's talk DNA with Julie. The truth is in your genes. In Cut Off Genes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Cut Off Genes, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson, and I am a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a gen. Genie. And I am Richard Castle, the co-host and producer of this podcast. Why are you laughing, Julie? <laughs> you sounded strange just then. I know. Why did I sound strange, Julie? <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like a like a um, leprechaun. Uh, well, I was trying to do a, a bit. <laughs> Because we are coming up on this uh, is episode Saint Day. this is episode ninety, and we are coming up on St. Patty's Day, and I'm half Irish. My father's side is Irish. And I didn't need uh, Ancestry to tell me that. Although I will tell you that um, Ancestry has notified me that my um, my DNA is being processed. So I'm glad to know that. Yippee. Uh, well, I mean, at least they keep, they keep me in the loop because yeah, I was like, do. what's going on? Like, yeah. it's been a long time. I sent that I know, in they're, January. They're, it's slow right now because it's post-holiday. Right. I mean, it's not that I'm impatient. I, well, yes, it is. I'm impatient. It's not like I'm dying to know, but I just feel like at some point, it's been a long time, and yeah. I'm still waiting for it. It's like mm-hmm. when you're waiting for a package to arrive, and it just hasn't yes. come, and you're like, come on. Hey, speaking of being impatient with Ancestry, yeah. um, I had the opportunity to log into somebody's Ancestry account today to look at their, because uh, they might be hiring the company that I work for, and I like to go in and look at their matches before I decide that it's a case we should take. Okay. Um, but he has the new messaging Remember the new messaging? You still don't have it? I still don't have it. And I'm getting bitter now because it looks basically like Facebook Messenger. You can see all the messages together, you know, one on one side of the page and one on the other. Mm -hmm. And and the time they came in and it's like a messenger thing and it's just much more user friendly. Um, But... Is there no way to go and like upgrade your account no. to, to get that? No, it's because I'm one of the original users, and apparently because I have um, files. I used I used to use the files to. So maybe if I just deleted the files because I don't really need them anymore. Yeah, but it, what if you delete them and it still nothing happens? Then you've just lost your then files. Then I'm. You know what? I'm going to Salt Lake. And uh, I'm just going to kick down the door. <laughs> well, you're going to be in Salt Lake for the, yeah. for the conference. And Why don't you go over there? I well, am. Well, now, will they be at this conference? Oh, of course. Well, then you should talk to them. You're right. Just go up to one of the representatives and say, hey, you know, I've been on Ancestry for a long time and I still don't have the new messaging. 
that, that, of course. Why uh, didn't I think of that? Yeah. Um, by the way, by the time uh, people are listening to this, I'm back already. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but you know, you'll have to <laughs> I'll let, let me you know. know how it went, no, guys. because that's I, I'm willing to bet you that if you tell somebody from Ancestry about that and that you really want it and that you have a podcast where you talk about that, then oh. that they may actually go right into your uh, file into <gasps> your account flip a switch. and flip a switch. Would that it were that easy. I know, but it may be that okay. easy. Yeah, maybe. All right. Fine. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, Julie. <laughs> Are you saying I'm squeaky or greasy? <laughs> Both. <laughs> no, ne- neither. That's why you're not getting greased. I need to be squeaky or greasy. <laughs> you're not getting greased. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to end it at that. You're, you're like, right. <laughs> you're, you're like um, oh my god, in um, whatever happened to Baby Jane. You're like the Blanche in the it, when she's a little girl at the beginning. I've written a right, letter. right. So, so Baby Jane is like famous, right? She's doing, she's a vaudeville star, and her sister's sort of like a, a blushing violet, right? And um, shrinking, the, shrinking violet. Well, maybe she blushed too. She had kind of rosy cheeks. <laughs> I'm mixing my metaphors. But anyway, so this this girl is standing outside the stage door, and she's Baby Jane's sister, and Baby Jane goes, I want an ice cream, you know? And she's saying, Blanche wants one, too. And Blanche goes, I, 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 I don't want any. And the oh. father goes, what are you trying to do? <laughs> so that's you, Julie. That's the little girl like, I, I don't want to make waves. I don't want to make waves. Yeah, one would never describe me as that person. That's true. No, you know what? <laughs> one would not describe you as that person um, when you're working for somebody else. Yes. But when you're working for yourself and you want to get this on your uh, own account, this messaging system, yeah. you'll be the little blushing, shrinking violet. Shrinking, blushing violet. <laughs> Am right. I right? Yeah, you're right. All right. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, I was watching... Hey. Hey. <laughs> I realize how much I do that. Hey. Hey, uh, hey is for hey. horses. Horses eat hay. <laughs> um, I was watching a rerun of uh, Finding Your Roots with Dr. Henry Louis Gates and, the other night, and it was the one where Larry David is on it. All right. And um, it was interesting... <laughs> That Larry David, it turns out that he is third to fourth cousins with Bernie Sanders. Is he really? Yes. He does a really good impression of him. I know. I mean, they do look um, like scary. It's it's scary how much they look alike. Um, I don't know if it's scary. <laughs> I think they're a type. They're two old I men. I certainly <laughs> think Larry is better put together. Yeah. Well, he's had a lot more money. <laughs> Larry Sanders. Oh yeah, I, I guess mean Larry. So. Larry. Um, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Larry Sanders. I know. Larry That's Sanders. the TV show. That's one of my favorites back in the day. Yeah. 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 Gary. That was Gary Shandling. That was Gary Shandling. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. I guess. But Bernie Sanders is doing okay. You know, he's fine. I'm just saying, Larry David. Yes. Have you right. seen the latest, um, the uh, the latest season of Curb Your Enthusiasm? No. Oh my God, it is so funny. Is it? Oh my God, it cracks me up. It's. All right. Um, hard to watch because he's like great at that kind it's of cringe. It's always hard to watch. My husband can't watch that yeah. stuff because he's automatically uncomfortable in, in uncomfortable situations I'm trying anyway. to decide why I like him so much because he's so awful on the show. Like he's just terrible. Because he lets himself be awful. Yeah. yeah. That's the beauty of it. I mean, think about it. He's getting to do what we all really just feel like yeah, doing. And he points out all the things that bother people, but like that you wouldn't just kind of yeah say it to yourself like, oh, that bothers me. Yeah. But he... Calls everybody out on it. Mm-hmm. And and well, he was the original George Costanza. Yes. I mean, that was based on him, yeah. wasn't it? I think. Yeah. I mean, I you don't really want to know that kind of person in real life, but to watch them on television is actually quite fun. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I have an update about uh, the Larry David, Bernie Sanders okay. extravaganza. Um, the show's host, Henry Louis Gates, said that the fact the two shared DNA was a shock. They share identical DNA on chromosome 7, 9, and 11. That's a lot. Men have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 of the pairs are identical. The amount of shared DNA suggests that David and Sanders are third or fourth cousins. In retrospect, when you see all that DNA they share, my God, it's a natural. Wow. So th- if this is true, they're about they're more like third or fourth cousins. Wow. That's what I just said. <laughs> Why this doesn't this update doesn't even make sense. It says that I think they may have ta- said on the actual show that he's closer to a second or third cousin. Wow, and they didn't know it. <laughs> no, do you have any of your second cousins? Do you know? 
barely know my first cousins. Exactly. <laughs> no, I Precisely. do know. I know. Some of them, but yeah. a lot of people don't. Right. You know. Oh, speaking of that, here's another fun thing. How do you refer to the siblings of your grandparents? What are they to you? The siblings of my grandparents. Well, I mean, we used to just call them uncle, but they're, they, I would imagine they're great uncle. No. Great uncle? Well, that is, that is traditionally what most people say. Right. That is what we all think. However, it's incorrect. Right. Because it doesn't make sense that your grandparents' siblings would be great because the greats don't start until the next generation up. Mm. So what we should refer to them is grand uncle and mm. grand aunt because they are the siblings of your grandparents. That makes sense. Yeah. So um, let me see. Let me see. If but that's I... never caught on, huh? No, but I'm going to make a catch on. Why not? Dang it. Hashtag grand uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so great aunt or great uncle is a lot like a second cousin. It's common practice for people to call their grandparents siblings by these terms, just as they often refer to their first cousin's children as second cousins. We have all done that as well, right. but they're actually first cousins once removed. Yeah. Right. Um, but neither is technically correct. The proper term for your relationship uh, to your brother's grandchildren is grand aunt, hmm. just like grandparents. Well, and I, you know, I told you my niece had a baby, and I, I mean, I'm that's great uncle. Is that not right? No, you're a grand uncle. Really? Yes, because your brother is her grandfather. No, my, her, no, her, my brother is her father. The baby. Oh, the baby's yes, grandfather. The baby. <gasps> so what you are to the baby is a grand uncle oh because your God. brother is her grandfather. Then your father would be, well, her great-great-grandfather, but your father's brother would be her great-granduncle. Oh, you know, I was feeling pretty good about myself, Julie, <laughs> as a great-uncle. And now, yeah, you're a grand. now I'm feeling really old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a it's grand gonna, It's going to take getting used to, but in actuality, I think it makes everything much easier. Because it's I, never yeah. made sense to me why they would call them great when those are when the greats don't start until the next I'm generation. going to choose oh? to, to believe that nope. grand in this sense means grand. Isn't it, isn't it, means it grand? Great. Isn't it grand? Oh, oh no, I can't say great. Yeah, it means grand. Yes, yes. Like <laughs> as in wonderful as opposed to, you know, very old yes. uncle. <laughs> like it. I like the idea of being called a grand aunt. My niece sent me on Valentine's Day a text message saying, I'm so glad that you are my, in my life and in the life of my little family, and I'm glad mm. that my son will grow up knowing you. Isn't that sweet? That is so sweet. And she's my only um, you know, niece. She's my mm -hmm. o I only have one. I don't have any nephews. She's, mm. the, she's it. Oh, wow. And I was just really touched by that, you know? I'm not usually touched Wait by a, a text message. So the, like so you couldn't your call name, and tell me that? Your name has ended. Do you realize that? <laughs> My name has ended. Yeah. Well, yeah. How does that make you feel? I don't care. All right. <laughs> I really fine. don't care. I'm not one of those guys that feels like I need to spread my name yeah. over, or, you know, what is it? Spread my seed. <laughs> That's a whole different thing. Well, okay. That's what Ancestry well, DNA for is for. names to live on, I just, you know what I want, you know what I want to live on? I want my work to live on. I write musicals. Yes. I write songs. I would like that, to me, art to live on if sure. I'm not going to have children. And, and also, if people look you up, they're going to look for uh, Richard Castle and then they're going to be like, ooh, let's see if we can do his genealogy. And they're going to go. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the buck stops here, folks. You know, that's so funny. I The other day, somebody talk, was talking about Patricia Cornwell, the, the author. Yes. And I have Cornwells in my family. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to do my genealogy and see if I am somehow related to Patricia, Patricia Cornwell. Mm -hmm. So I Googled her and her parents... Um, name is not Cornwell. It's a made-up name. <laughs> so, so the buck it, stopped there. Is it her pen name? Is yeah, that it? It's okay. Her pen name. All right. Well, there you go. Wah, wah. It's not. You know. I let me just say. Go back and say. I don't. I love that people have kids and they want their family name to move. But it's not so much their family name to to go on. I don't really care about that. Yeah. It's just you. you a legacy. Whether your legacy is a a, a child mm -hmm. or a you know, the good deeds or, that you have done or, or the art work. or the work or yep. artwork or whatever you've built in your life to live on. Yeah. You know, that's enough for me. Yeah. I hear that. I also, I, I'm, I think we're ready for women to stop having to take their husband's names. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Although it's going to mess up genealogy. Um, I, th I love the idea of the names 
being the uh, hyphenates, the hyphenates, or like being in my case, you did it. I didn't. Well, I did. I didn't hyphenate it though. Dixon's my middle name now. Oh, okay. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson. You know what I didn't do? I didn't give my children uh, Dixon as a middle name. I see. I could yeah. go back and do that, but Dixon is not my birth name anyway. Right. Right. So even though I, the reason I kept the name Dixon was to honor my father, though. Right. Um, I liked the idea behind that. But even on Facebook, like trying to find friends from high school, like if you don't know their married name, you hope that they put their maiden name that on the profile. That is precisely why I did that. Well, I already just said it right. to honor my father, yeah. but another reason. So people could find you. <laughs> yes, was so I could be found. Yeah. Because um, I wanted to be found and sure. I wanted to be remembered. And if somebody, God forbid, was actually looking for me because they were a family member and knew who adopted me. Right. <laughs> You know, yes. I was, I've, I've always put myself out there. Exactly. Yes. So so that's the story. Instead of great, it's grand. Okay. And let's, you guys, uh, let's start doing that. Okay. Okay. Let's break. <laughs> if you're enjoying our podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review. Or consider supporting us on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash cutoff jeans podcast. Now back to Julie and me. We're back. Hello. Hello. Hey, guys. It's time to thank our newest patrons. Oh, yes. We've got to thank them. Yes. So thank you so much for becoming a patron, Catherine Crossman, Mary Wood, and Scott Leverens. We really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much. And send me your address if you have not done so yet, so I can send you goodies. (laughs) Will you bake me some goodies, Julie? I might. Yeah. Are you a baker? Do you bake? Nope. Oh. But sometimes, I'm not not a baker. Okay. No, you, you're more of a crafty person. So you could like make something that looks like it was baked, but it's actually not edible. Precisely. <laughs> I will mold anything Just to look mold, like it's mold edible. Mold me a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> mold me a brownie. Okay. Is that like peel me a grape? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> mold me a brownie. Okay. It doesn't have the same ring, does it? It, it really doesn't. Be- Beulah. Was it, was it Mae West that said it? Beulah, peel me a grape? Beulah? Beulah. Beulah. Yeah. I don't know that part. I, I, I don't know why I know that. I don't either. I know peel me a grape. I know, but I'm going to have to look that up. Of I'm course willing you to, are. I'm willing to bet you oh, May. that Mae West said it in like some movie from Who do you think Beulah was? Her maid? Probably. Yeah, all right. Sure. Or or Ferris Bueller. Yeah. No. <laughs> not Bueller. Like Matthew, <laughs> Matthew Broderick. Was standing there going, um. Yeah. Matthew, Matthew, I can honestly say that Matthew Broderick was never in a Mae West film. No, you don't think yeah. so? Okay. My little chickadee. Fine. <laughs> Fine. My little chickadee. All right. Uh, last week, guys, I promised you that I would tell you how to add a floating branch to an existing tree. Yes. The goal being, again, to get all of your DNA matches in one place and eventually have those branches connect Yes, to figure out how you're connected. So they're not floating anymore. So they're not floating anymore. But here's how you get them in there. And it's not intuitive at first. You kind of have to trick ancestry. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. So and I'm going to do it as I'm saying this just because it's easier for me to explain what I'm doing as opposed to imagining what I'm doing. So I am just going to go into a random tree here. So you're going to go into your existing tree that you want to add this match to. And you're going to click on basically anybody. And when you click on their name, uh, it'll come, something will come up. It'll say profile, search, quick edit. And then there's a little tool icon with an arrow. And you click on that and it says, view this family tree, add tag, delete this person, add relative. Add relative is the second one. Click on add relative. <laughs> Ancestry is telling me check back soon. We're sorry, but this feature is temporarily unavailable. <laughs> Good timing, Ancestry. <laughs> when we're trying to explain the whole thing. You know what? I think I'm logged onto somebody else's tree, <laughs> uh, somebody else's account. That's why. Okay, I'm signing out, and then I'm going to sign back in as myself. All right. So we're going to click on this person, and we're going to click on the little tool thing. We're going to click on add relative. Now another box comes up and it says, who would you like to add? Brother, spouse, sister, child. I usually say child. And I click on that. Now I have, um, I have a whole new add a new person box. 
All right. And their last name is the last name of the person that I'm adding them as a child, even though they're not their child. Okay. So I'm going to add their name. I'm going to add me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to change the last name, which in this case is Whiting, and I'm going to make it Dixon. And I'm female, and I'm living. And then I'm going to push save. Now, there I am. However, I am still connected to this Whiting person, and he is not my father, and I want to put my actual father in here. Okay. So I'm going to click back on me, on my profile, and there I am, and then I'm going to go up to edit in the upper right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. It's a drop-down menu. You click on that. It says quick edit, edit relationships, delete person. Click on edit relationships. And on... Uh, this page, it says father, mother, spouse, and children, like different places. Um, and it has this whiting person as my father who is not my father. Right. So I am going to delete him. There's also an option to put biological, adopted, step, foster, related, guardian, all of those things. But none of those things apply here. So I'm just going to click on the X that will delete him as my father. Now, he will still be in the tree. He will not be my father, however. That but he, just, he remains, but the relationship does not. He remains in the tree. So now I'm floating in the tree. All right. All by myself. And mm -hmm. the only way to find me would be to search for me because mm -hmm. I'm not connected to any of these people. Now, there's a place to add a father and mother still on this screen. So you can click on add father and you can put select someone in your tree to add or add a new person. In this case, my father is not in this tree. So I'm going to click add new person. And the add new person comes up, and I'm going to add him just like blah, blah, blah. And then also I can add my mother that way and add everybody else. Now I have a floating branch that is not connected to anybody else. It's, your, it's the people you know are related to you, and you're all on that branch. And we are on this branch. Now I have a branch that I can expand on. And um, so this is – and also when I put my name in there, I forgot to go back. So – Assuming that this is the DNA match that I'm adding into the tree mm -hmm. and say it was me, I would have put Julie Dixon in the first part of it and then under where the last name would go, I would put the Centimorgan count. Okay, yes. 1435 CM and then that comes up as your last name. Mm. And then everybody knows that that's a DNA match to whosoever tree this is. Okay. Okay? Then you can build from that. When you, op when you close the tree and open it again, it's probably going to go back to the home person. You can't see them. That's when you go. You click back onto the name of the tree. Click on Overview. And on the Overview uh, page, click on Summary or look at Summary and click on People. Now you have your list of everybody in the tree, starting with people that have numbers as last names. Hmm. So you know, then you can look at them. Who, if you want to find your highest match, you find the highest number. Click on them. And how you go is this different to them. from the from your own tree that you've built? Like, how is this branch that you've put? It's identical, right? Because you you just put your name on there, and all of the people that are re related to you. Okay, I was just using me as an as an example. I see who this person. This is. Let's assume that this is just a DNA match that I don't know how they're related to me. I see. I'm going to put them in my tree. As a floating branch. Gotcha. I got and, you. All right. And I'm going to build on everything that I know about them. And then from then, Ancestry, theoretically, should start giving me clues saying, oh, is this who you're talking about? And I can build their tree from there. And then maybe you'll get a connection where exactly. you see and, where it connects. And I inevitably, I always do. Well, well there you go. Almost always, unless, unless somebody was wrong. <laughs> so the floating branches don't remain floating for long. Hopefully. The goal is for there to be no floating branches. Right. But they'll all the connect. End. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Okay. <laughs> I hope that makes sense, guys. Again, you can go back and listen to it at halftime. <laughs> There's a halftime? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like I'm drunk. It's fun. <laughs> So listen to this. The genealogy boom has hit a roadblock. The Trump administration uh, plans huge fee hikes for immigration records. First. Why? I don't know. Ugh. Except for because they don't like immigrants. I don't know. Um, at a time when researching family history is booming, the nation's immigration and citizenship agen agency has proposed dramatically hiking fees to access records from the first half of the 20th century. The move has outraged professional and amateur genealogists who argue that the increase would effectively put valuable immigration information out of reach for many. 
Wow. That you really know, sucks. I would argue that it should almost be free, like like the Public Information mm-hmm. Act. Like these are yes. our records of the people that came in the country. Act. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And that we should be able to search and find unless, you know, if they're already digitized, what does it cost them? Well, right. I mean, there needs to be some kind of fee just to pay for the people who work there. Right. Sure. But I mean, um, you're not, I'm not, I'm assuming that when you are looking for someone uh, on your, some immigration record that you're not like calling them up, having somebody go into some, you know, um, warehouse right. and find the file and, and yeah, you the, know. the digitized ones. And there are some that are public anyway. Like you can go to um, Ellis Island yes. and look in their okay. their registers there. But listen, the the fees would nearly triple, and in many cases they would rise nearly five hundred percent from one hundred thirty dollars to six hundred twenty five dollars to obtain a single paper file. Oh my gosh! That's wow. Cost prohibitive. The little-known genealogy program administered by U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services allows genealogists, family historians, and other researchers to obtain citizenship and alien registration files, visa applications, and other records documenting the lives of deceased immigrants who arrived in the United States between the late 19th and mid-20th century. Well, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. It's bad. It's... um. I, and I can't. Uh, and there's no there's no reason behind it. Like there's not. They're not saying. Well, it's the reason is we need to upgrade our systems, or it's costing. Yeah, us they're more. not giving a reason. They're yeah. just. Let me see. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services officials declined to explain exactly how they arrived at the new amounts, but the agency has said it must increase fees across the board, including substantial hikes for green card and citizenship applications. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, to avoid the $1.26 billion annual budget shortfall. By law, USCIS must fund itself through fees. Mm. I mean, I'm going to be the skeptic here and say maybe they need to raise the fees for these green cards and um, citizenships because there's so few of them being allowed in that they need to yes. make up the shortfall exactly. by charging more for each exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Mendelson, do you remember who that is? The name is She's familiar. the genealogist who. Um, who started uh, resistance genealogy? Okay. Who basically, when when somebody yes. somebody talks about you know the they're, when they're anti immigrant aliens and yes. what have you, she goes and she does their genealogy and finds how their family came to this country. I love that. I enjoy it very much. <laughs> well, it, and it almost seems like it might be a direct swipe at her. Mm. I don't know. There's um. Yeah. Who knows? Who, who knows? Who knows? Somebody said, um, what could possibly have changed in three years to warn such a huge increase? <laughs> That's all. That was the only. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who knows so, what's happened three years ago? Gee, I wonder. Mm. All right. Um, should we take a break? Let's do that. All right. Thank you for listening to Cut Off Jeans with Julie Dixon Jackson and Richard Castle. You can support us by going to patreon.com forward slash cut off jeans podcast. Now, back to the program. Hi, everyone. I have on the line Jeff Lanka to tell us his story. Jeff is driving. Where are you driving again, Jeff? I'm driving up to Killington, Vermont. Ooh. Full disclosure, Jeff is a former client of mine, and um, he's actually one of my first clients and my first clients with the company I work with now. Um uh, and he has a great story, and it was really great working with him. So I would like uh, for Jeff to share his story with you guys. So, Jeff, will you just um, start at the beginning or wherever you'd like to start and tell us your story? Okay. Um, so I'm an only child of my adoptive parents, and um they told me I was adopted when I was very little. Um, in fact, they read the classic book, The Chosen Baby, to me many times. Um, I was under the impression I was around six months old when I was adopted. Uh, and I, I was so used to the idea that I actually thought everybody was adopted. When I was in third grade, we, we read a story in class about a, a, an Indian who was adopted and I was just like, well, every, I'm adopted, isn't everybody? And the kids were laughing at me. I didn't understand why, you know. Oh, how funny. And then they thought I was an Indian, too, you know. <laughs> so, American so, um, Indian or East Indian? Yeah. No, American Indian. Okay. <laughs> so um, I just grew up with that fact, and um, it was totally natural for me. 
Uh, so, you know, my parents were, they did the right thing there. You know, at various times throughout my life, I kind of uh, was puzzled or wondering, you know, who's out there? Is somebody out there that, you know, is related to me? It's a natural uh, curiosity I think many adoptees have. Um, and I didn't, but the thing was, I didn't want to offend my parents by searching. Um, I'm in New York State, and I had at one point tried to figure out if I could get any records. And it turns out that New York State at the time it was everything was closed, so I couldn't get anything. So I just let it drop. And then my mom, my A mom died in 2011, and my A dad died in 2014. And uh, my wife was like, why don't you try to search now? Because, you know, they're both dead, so you're not going to offend them. And I kind of dragged my feet, and I didn't do anything. And then fast forward to about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and, you know, suddenly Ancestry.com was becoming, like, huge. And so I decided to go on there and just put in my facts and see what I could see. And I ended up getting a lot of information about my A family, you know, um, and that was kind of cool, but uh, it didn't really answer any of my uh, questions. And they had to hire an expert. That's what I clicked on, right? And so it, I can't remember, it was some company and I actually... Um, you know, clicked on, okay, I'll purchase this package. And then I spoke to some woman from that company and she was very nice. And she says, we are going to put you in, put you in touch with an expert on um, genealogy and she will be able to take it from here. And that was you. So then, then you Facebooked me and um, you said, you know, let, can you tell me anything, any information you have at all, right? So I, all I said was, I know, uh, you know, that I'm pretty sure it was done in New York and it was, I'm born on, you know, in 1960 on my birth date I gave you. And then I had opened a safe deposit box that my mom had after she died, and in it was some sort of paperwork. It wasn't my original birth certificate, but I think it was some sort of adoption paperwork. And on there was my original name. And that, that I had, so I gave that to you. And actually, it was kind of a funny name. It was Barry Buckingham. Right. Which That's everybody, a- when I told people, they were like, oh, maybe you're royalty, you know? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, like they're named after the palace. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I want to go back for just a second are you are, are you sure you you found me through ancestry? Yes. Really? And you were like a sub you were a subcontractor. Oh, so for ancestry, some other company. Yeah, well I am but I'm but not ancestry unless ancestry contacted the company that I'm a uh, a subcontractor for. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. That's uh Yeah, this- I didn't know that. <laughs> It was it was the it was hire an expert, really, and that that turned out to be the company that you subcontracted with. Okay, fair enough. And have uh, you taken the DNA yeah. test yet? Well, yes, yes, okay. I did the DNA test. I believe I did it after you did all of your work. I don't think so. Oh no! Okay, no. yeah, it's, it's a been a while. Fuzzy. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. I they usually hire me after oh, the DNA has been done right, because I right. focus on DNA. Yeah. Yes. Now I remember. Okay. So, um, yeah, it did come back with some potential, I believe, second cousins. Right. That's the closest it's found. And then I did the hire an expert after that. Gotcha. That's right. Right. Now I remember. That makes sense. <laughs> so... I actually had tried to contact one of the, uh, there was only about three or four second cousins, right? So I sent feelers out to a few of those, and I hadn't heard anything back. Robert Rose was was one of them, and I didn't hear anything back. And then there was another one, I uh, can't remember the name. Oh, oh, Tyler Jocelyn, right? They were in. And I didn't hear anything back there right away either. Sometimes people don't log on for a month or two. 
so they don't get any notification that there's a, a message waiting, right? Right, and sometimes so, they don't. Sometimes they just don't want to respond anyway. Do you remember what right. you put in the message? I said that I hi, um, you know, I'm Jeff Lanka, and I'm adopted, and I did a DNA test, and they said that you may be a second cousin of mine, and I was just wondering if. Um, oh, I might have mentioned Barry Buckingham, okay. you know, because that's the only info I had. OK. You know, um, so then, you know, I, I spoke to you and um, I gave you the name and the date of birth. And that's all I had. Right. And it was two weeks and I didn't hear anything from you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, OK, well, maybe it just didn't work out. You couldn't find anything, you know. And then suddenly you, you can't contacted me. It was, I remember it was on a Friday. You, you contacted me on Facebook Messenger. Um, I don't know what you did in those two weeks, <laughs> right? I did magic. <laughs> yes. Well, so you said, listen, I believe I found your birth mother. And I was like, whoa, I, I can't believe. Then I'm like, two weeks, that's that's amazing because that's so, so fast. You know, how, how could you do that? You know, all that work. So I was amazed. And um, you gave me some information about, you were saying, okay, it looks like she's deceased, uh, and here is a Facebook for her, and then you said, I believe she has some uh, children, and you gave me the Facebooks for uh, two half-sisters and one half-brother, all of which were from her, and um, that, you just, I was like, wow, you know, (laughs) And I was looking at their pictures and and I looked at the picture of uh, my half brother and I was like, wow, there's a lot of resemblance there, you know, and uh, then the two sisters. And so that was that was that half of the story. Right. So you said to me at that point, I'm not really I haven't really found anything on your father's birth father's side yet, but I'll keep working on it. And then. Monday, you contacted me and said, I believe I found your birth father as well. Right. Three days later. And you gave me the picture of two brothers. One of them was this guy, Ted, and I was like, I don't really see any resemblance. But then when you gave me the picture of Philip, I was like, oh, boy, it's like looking in a mirror. Yeah, I remember. I think you said something like, uh, oh, my God, it's a twin or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was (laughs) Philip. And so... Now I had both both pieces of information and and it was like, you know, how how exciting it is, because this mystery, you know, I was, I guess, either 57 or 58 at the time. And, you know, that whole span of years, there was no uh, it was a big mystery. So yeah. suddenly the mystery is revealed, you know. Yeah. And so the emotions are flying. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. <laughs> so let me interrupt right, so real fast. Yep. Um. So what ha- in the meantime? So I told you that I thought it was Philip, but I I didn't have any any proof right. at that point. Right. So and I think I may have talked about this on the podcast before. Um. That I actually that I called Philip, and his wife. Well, I called I called them, and his, his wife answered, and I asked to talk to him, and I told him I was a genealogist, and I, I wanted to ask him um, about your mother, but his wife stayed on the line, and so I didn't want to get too specific, because <laughs> they were both so cute and just trying to help me, and I mentioned her name, her legal name. And it wasn't familiar to him. And they were both trying to help me. But so I just kind of put it out there. I said where she was from and what she did for a living um, and let them my number and told them, you know, if they thought of anything, you know, could they give me a call? So, you know, I thought that maybe something might click. Um, but I didn't hear back from them. In the meantime, you had started contacting cousins, right? Yeah, so, so um, I remember s- distinctly that phone call you had, and in fact, I was shopping in Micro Center f- <laughs> for some co- computer stuff because I'm a computer geek. And as soon as you were done talking to them, you called me back and said, "Here's what happened," uh-huh. and you described the whole conversation. And you said I was really dancing around it because it's a tough thing to come out and just blurt it out, because sometimes people will will freak out. 
So yeah. you got to be gentle the way you approach them. That's what you said. Exactly. So, yes, yes. So um, I finally got back a, a message from that Robert Rose on Ancestry. And it turns out that Robert Rose is in his 90s, and this had been a gift from his three daughters, right? So one of the daughters message me back and says, oh, yes, and, and okay, I, I'm willing to talk to you about this potential link. And so I said, well, since then, I found them really exciting news. I found out that it's probably Philip Skoletsky. And so she said, that's my dad's first cousin. Uh-huh. And I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. So we, we you know, conversed uh, a few times and then we were going to be up and they live outside of Boston and we were going to be up in the Boston area. And so we decided we would stop by their house on the way home. And so I stopped by the house and um, the three sisters were very nice. And his, his wife of two years was there. And, you know, it was like they were very, very nice to me. And so we sat at the dining room table and we were discussing um, how are we going to approach Philip and his wife, Annette, who's the one that she's very outgoing and yes. gregarious and all of that. And, and so we said, OK, why don't we FaceTime them with a, with the iPhone, you know? And so they got on the phone with them and they were like, how are you? You know, it's been a while since we spoke and how's the family? And they were doing all the pleasantries. And so one of the sisters said, you know, we have a guy here. He's sitting at the table with us. And we're wondering if there was anything in your past about, you know, somebody you might be related to that you might have lost touch with. And they were dancing around the whole thing, right? This, uh, sort of like you did. Yeah. And at one point, Annette said, you know, somebody called about two weeks ago <laughs> with a similar story. She, she blurts out. I love your impression See, of was, Annette. Yeah. Well, she's got the thick Boston accent. Yeah. Yeah. So um, then the youngest of the three sisters says, give me the phone. You guys are stupid. <laughs> Philip, do you remember Jocelyn Buckingham? And he goes, no. Okay. That was the end of part one with Jeff Lanka. Looking forward to part two. Yeah, he's fun. He's such a nice guy. So I, while we were on the break, <laughs> I looked up Beulah, peel me a grape. And sure enough, <laughs> even though I don't know how I know this, it was from a movie called I'm No Angel with Mae West. Shocking. 1933. And she says, Beulah. And you hear off stage, you hear a woman say, yes. And she says, peel me a grape. <laughs> and it peel be- me a grape. And it, becomes, uh, it became very famous. But um, apparently, that's a euphemism for pour me a drink. Like oh. grape, like a wine. Give me, pour me, peel me a grape is like pour me a glass of wine. That is a fantastic story. Right? I love that. Who knew? Yeah. So um, <laughs> now that I've gotten that off my chest, I am Richard Castle, and I have a website, richardcastle.com, if you care to go there and learn more about what I do when I am not on this podcast. I care. Yes. And so go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you can also follow me on the Twitter at Castle Songs. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson. Follow me at the Twitter at Jules Jackson with two O's. Follow the podcast at Cut Off Jeans Pod on the Twitter. Find us on Facebook, uh, Cut Off Jeans Podcast. If you are a patron, find Cut Off Jeans Patron Only Facebook page. And uh, send me an email if you'd like to do an interview like Jeff. If you have anything fun to tell me, please give me a uh, Drop me a line, Jules Jackson, uh, Jules, sorry, at cutoffjeans.com. Jules, Jules Jackson. Yes, Jules Jackson at cutoffjeans.com. Sorry, Rich. The truth is not on her tongue. Where is it, Julie? <laughs> the truth is in your jeans. Oh, Beulah. Yes, ma'am. Peel me a grape.